All right, we're live with the Hummingbird Robotics Kits in Schools. And I am Travis Lape. I'm a technology integrationist with the Harrisburg School District. And I'm just going to hang tight here for just a little bit and see if anybody jumps on. And we'll dig into what is Hummingbirds, what are the robot kits, and how can you bring it into your classroom. So if you're here, uh, feel free to put in questions if you'd like to put in questions. Um, gladly would um, entertain those and uh, try to answer them the best I can. All right, let's jump in right away here and just make sure I have everything programmed correctly. All right, we are recording, so I will just jump in, and then we can have a conversation about this on the side in a Voxer group on Twitter. So you can go back and always rewatch this. This will get uploaded to YouTube and pushed out as soon as the recording is done. So I see somebody is just jumping on one viewer, so that means the link is live and we are out there. So I'll just jump in. I'll go through kind of the parts of the Hummingbird Robotics kits and then how I've started to integrate those into our curriculum and what we do with students every day here at Harrisburg South Middle School. The kit is really nice because it's simple. Uh, that's what I probably like the most about their kits. It comes in a nice little classroom box. And build your own robots, everything you need is included. And that is true besides the creativity and the material that needs to build their robots. So uh, what I like about their robots is they have tricolor lights. I'll show you these here. And when you program these, you can make them different colors because they're the tricolor. So you can mix colors like the color wheel. You can mix these colors to get the LEDs to do different things. The other nice thing about it is, is they also have just regular LED lights. So let me pull those up real quick. Right. Those are the tricolors. And then here are the just regular LED lights. So the green and black would be green, red and black would be a red, there would be an orange LED, there's a yellow LED. I'll make sure I get these up higher. So nice thing about it is you get two separate LED kits. So you get the tricolor, which is here. And these LEDs, you can change the eyes to any color mixing uh, the, the red, green, blue uh, color wheel colors. Or you can use just the regular ones that are already colored. So you can use a green, a yellow, a red um, LED light to make that. So that's, that's the LED part of it. Then we have what they call their temperature sensors. And you get these as well. So again, when you're building your robot, you could have different temperatures. I see this in science or math, being able to get the temperature of a room and have it be coded and programmed to give you the output of the room and graphing that temperature based on the hour of the day. So over a course of a 24-hour period, what was the temperature like? And so you can make a robot using your temperature sensors. Then we have some light sensors, which you can see there. Uh, this will be programmed, and I'll show you a robot that I did with, with uh, the light sensor. Depending on the lightness or the darkness and how you set your program up, you'll be able to use the light sensors. Then we have a bundle of joy. We have knobs, so you can turn things on and off. We have distance sensors. So depending on how close something is, will trigger the robot to do something or say something, depending on your program. And then we have microphones. So again, you can program your robot to listen and respond and do something based on that. All, all again is programmed in this little kit. There are vibration motors. We have four of them here. 
just nice little simple. The thing I like about them is the term, the ends on them are very nice. They're thick and they're easy to use. Uh, then we have some DC motors. So if you're looking to get tires or wheels to spin, you have your DC motors to be able to do that. And then there's a whole bunch. I want to say there's eight of them. Three, six, seven, eight, I believe. Servio motors. So again, nice little motor. This is the this is what I'm going to show you a lot of is how to use these because this is the perfect introduction into using robots in your classroom. Are with the servios, and then you have the hummingbird board, and this is just an Arduino at heart board on the back. You can see the Arduino board, okay, and you can program that hummingbird kit your hummingbird board to interact with the Arduino. You can, um, very easy to plug everything in. What I like about the hummingbird kit, and I'll show you in their one program, the basic one, but it tells you everything. So right here, over there, the tricolor. So remember we have the tricolor LEDs. You can plug those into your ports, Oops, backwards, plug those into your ports here and be able to change colors. Or you got the regular LED lights. So you got four ports for those. Then as we work our way down on there, there's the vibration motors, there's the sensors, and then over here, there's the servios. So there's four servios and then two motors. So you're able to take this and plug in all of your material, hook it up to your computer, and run a robot. So I want to show you just a very simple one. Uh, that we made just to kind of get the idea. First and foremost, the great greatest thing about Hummingbird Robotics is that you allow the kids to be creative and innovative with the robots. Let them show their learning and let them drive their instruction. That's what I love about this because if they start with the creativity part first, building their robot, the programming side will go very simple. So don't let them think about programming until they've got their creation made. Um, first question on the board, do you feel that kids could do the hummingbirds without any practice with any other robots beforehand? Yes, I, I do believe that. I believe they can. And, and really, it's back to that first point. We need them to build whatever robot they're going to build first and foremost. Have them build that. Then worry about the programming of it. And I'll show you the programming side here shortly so that you can see it and it will make sense. How much is a kit? They look awesome. Yes, they are awesome. The kit, I believe, is $850. If you go to Hummingbird, let me pull up the website real quick. If you go to hummingbirdkit.com, you can get a class kit. And I would recommend the class kit because it, it allows you to make, um, to have four robots being created at one time. So you could have groups of students um, working on the same robot or this could be a, just an extension of a lesson allowing kids that are passionate about robots to showcase their learning. Did all those pieces come in the kit? Yes. Um, great questions, Judy and, and Jennifer. Uh, all the things that I just showed you come in the Classroom Duo kit. Make sure uh, that, that that's the kit you probably want to look at getting. Uh, it is, it, like I said, I think it's right right around $850, but it's well worth it when you think about all the things you can make with it. It's not just a one boxed-in robotic kit that sometimes you buy, and the only thing you can make are Lego robots or Sphero robots. You can, you can really do a lot of different things. So you can share stories, and that's what I want to share with you today is, let me bring my little friend over here. I have made a cow jumps over the moon robot. So you could use this in your classroom of students sharing their favorite story, maybe sharing about characters in their story, but they could do this. This is very simple. There are, you're gonna see two LED lights light up here, one in the middle of the moon, one on the nose, and you're gonna see the little cow in the back jump over the moon. So I'm gonna get this all set up real quick here. And then after I show you how it works, I am going to move to the point of showing you the programming side because I think that's the, that's the part that scares a lot of teachers is, well, I'm a math teacher or I'm a science teacher or I teach elementary school, but I don't, I don't know anything about robots and I don't know how these work or how to program. Don't worry about that. It is, it is simple. They have great tutorials. 
everything I'm showing you today, I have taught myself. I have learned on the fly. I've learned by watching tutorials. And actually, I've learned from other students because the students in our makerspace um, will come in and work with me and teach me what's going on, but also the students on the actual Hummingbird website. Uh, they have tutorial videos in that as well. So I'm going to get this guy all plugged in. There is a power source. I'll show you. So there is a power source right here. That needs to be plugged into an outlet. And then there is a USB cable that runs on, from the board to the, to the computer to communicate. So I've showed this, this uh, cow jumps over the moon a, ooh, one too many times because now, now I just broke him. Uh, let me fix him real quick with a little tape. I'll be right, doesn't look like I have any tape here. I'll be right back. All right, sorry about this. I've shown this, this demo a little too much and I need to maybe make a few adjustments to him. Oh, thanks, Corey. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it does take a while, but once you get it, it makes sense. I'd never heard of these before. You mentioned them on Voxer. What ages do you think these would work best for? I think third grade on up. I really do. I think third graders could really do a lot of neat things with this. So I'm going to get him all set up. And I'm going to show you my screen so that you can see uh, the programming side of it. So I'm going to show, I'm going to screen share this, present to everyone. Okay, so Create Lab Visual Programmer is the very introduction um, programming. Excuse me here. Just got to make sure I open up the right file. All right, now you should see me connecting. Searching for my Hummingbird robotic kit. Now my kit doesn't want to uh, power on. It just did probably 10 minutes ago. So we're going to change plans real quick. Not quite sure why he's not powering on. I'm going to switch Hummingbird mines. I'm going to just take a break on that one real quick. All right, so as we jump over, oh, there we go. Now it jumped in. So um, I'm going to take you back here. And as you saw earlier in our board, you saw our Hummingbird Robotics kits. And so uh, what's, what's nice about our Hummingbird Robotics kits is that we have, um, and this is what Corey was talking about in the chat there of how easy this is. Um, if I have a servio hooked up, I click on the servio, and I can adjust the servio based on that. Then what happens to your board is you automatically are seeing things happen, and I think that's the biggest thing in programming is being able to see stuff happen right away. If I had tri-colored LEDs plugged in, I could start to change the lights and mix the colors. Once I've written one code that I want, I then save it, 
and it saves as an expression. So here you see I have a cow jumps and a reset. So I've made two expressions, two designs, and then I go into my sequence builder, and I want it to recognize, I want it to reset when it's dark, and I want the cow to jump when it's light. So it would pick up the light sensor, and when it's dark, the cow would go back to normal, and when it would be light, the cow would jump over the moon. And so that is um, kind of the process of how to kind of create this. Now, again, this is just very fast. I just want to get you introduced to it and then let you kind of go explore, but also know that you can connect with me on Twitter at Travis Lape or in our Voxer group some of you are a part of. Would love to connect more with you and show you more, but I just want to give you a basics of, of it um, and how easy it is programming, programming this device. Um, I'm going to jump back real quick and look at the questions popping up here. Um, it sounds like there's a lot more flexibility with Hummingbird uh, robotic kits to have more open-ended learning. Absolutely. Um, it, it really does. Um, what age groups talked about that, Rachel? Third through, you know, uppers. So I think that's good. Love the transparency with learning the process of robots. What a great example for students. Yes. The, the fun thing about this is just allowing the students to be with you and go through the process with you. That's probably where I've learned the most and had the most fun with students. Hey, thanks, Jennifer. Um, Colonial Makerspace, I, I want to know more about, um, but thanks for, for jumping in. Um, so that is, that is just the basic programming. So now there's another step. So now let's say you've got some students that got this down. They're like, ah, you know what? I want to I play with Scratch a little bit. Well, the fun thing about that is they can. And so I'm going to pull up my scratch code. And I want to make sure. I'm going to run this real quick. I wonder why. I wonder if I have a bad USB case here. Let's see. Hold on. It's like my status keeps going in and out, so we'll see. We'll problem solve on the fly here. I appreciate the patience. I may have too many windows open. We'll see here. Because it doesn't want to recognize that I have. Then. All right, there we go. All right, now we should be golden. All right, so right now, as you see on my screen, it's running this code for genetics. And so last night I worked on this for a while. And as you see on the screen, this is great. Like you could do this just in your class with just computers. But I made a robot. And so I'm going to share my, I'm going to take my screen off share and show you what's happening right now. Right now it's going to run 100 loops and find me the number of time my genotype shows up blue. So I'm going to go back here and unshare and then show you the robot that's in the process of collecting that data for me. So I have my robot. My robot's collecting the data. Now he has blue eyes. Blue eyes are on. He's a, he moved the arrow over to blue. So now if we went back to that code, we would see that it's still running. So now there's brown eyes. 
It's still running that code a hundred times. It's going to run a hundred pieces of data for us and then find us the average of how many times, what is, what is the chance of me having blue eyes based on my genotype. Now you can change this. This is very simple. We just had a genotype for uh, mom B, uh, RB, capital R, lowercase b. The reason for that is because it doesn't recognize similar letters, so you have to make them unique. So in my code, when I, when I had written my code, I'll let this run just a little bit more. Still running. I'll let it switch over to blue one more time, and then I'll share my screen again. So there's blue. So now I'll share my screen again so that you can see the code. So genotype from mom, letter pick at random, one, or, one to two of RB. So it's picking randomly one capital R, one lowercase b at random. So as you see over here, it's picking mom b dad r. Now it's picking mom r dad r. I set the program gene from mom equals b and gene from dad equals b, then run this code for blue eyes because lowercase b and lowercase b will give you blue eyes. Um, again, another way to teach genetics, but a way to engage your learners that are passionate about robotics and wanting to use robotics to show their learning, students can play with these numbers and set these up however they want to run their, their assessments and their tests. So again, just another very simple robotic kit. Made it probably within 20 minutes and was able to showcase learning here of brown eyes versus blue eyes for genotypes. Feel free to shoot any questions. I'm gonna to try to hook up this other one now. I think the problem was is that I was already in it when I went to hook it up. So I'm gonna hook up the next one. So that, that's a little higher end of using Scratch, but very, very easy. Again, I do not have a background in programming, and I've taught myself everything I know from, from the Hummingbird Robotics um, website. So I'm going to go back here now and see if I can connect to my expression builder. And open it. Boom. So we're connected. So I'm just gonna set this in real quick. Cow jumps. Cow resets. So as you see, it's picking up the sensor. You can't see because I'm not sharing my screen. Let me share my screen. Sorry about that. All right, so now that you can see my screen, you can see the light sensor is picking up up to this point. Now if I put my hand in front of that light sensor, it gets darker. Now if I come back, it gets brighter. So you can move this to make sure, depending on what type of room you're in, you can move this to meet your needs. So I'm just gonna show you here, when it's dark, it's gonna reset. When it's light, the cow's gonna jump over the moon. So right now, the lights are on. Um, my servio wants to jump, but I may need to look at that again. But you can see the LEDs come on. The LEDs will go off once it gets dark. So there the cow went down. And now, so it's in the reset mode. It gets light, the cow jumps. So I'm going to share my screen or take away my screen so you can see the robot actually in action. Now that you see the code on the screen, you'll be able to see the action. All right, so let me show you the screen. LEDs, cow's there. When I cover up the light, the cow goes down, cow jumps over the moon.
So again, very easy to set up because that very first program I showed you matches the same colors on the programming board. So the green, the blue, the yellow, the orange, all of that matches that programming board. So students can look and say, you know what? I have two tricolors in. I need to click on one and two and then mess with the colors to get the LEDs to move. Uh, Corey has a question. Do you teach kids specific coding skills before they add the robot piece or do you do it all together? Right now we're doing it all together. We're letting kids learn as we go um, with these, really letting them empower themselves of what can they do with these robots and how creative can we get with them. So right now we're just, we're, we're letting them experience and go through it together. Scratch is a little level up. So once I know students have gotten this idea of how this is working, then, then that that scratch piece would be probably a little more hands-on of teaching them how to make if-then statements, how to make loops, all of those sort of things. So good question there, Corey. What kit did you purchase? I'm thinking of using this in the makerspace. Absolutely, Lisa. We, we um, got the Hummingbird Duo Classroom Kit. It gives you four robots, um, four robot brains, and then all the lights and LEDs, the sensors, the microphones, the distance sensors, all of that comes into that piece there. So uh, that kit, I believe, is $850. Judy, this is a great way to make learning come alive. You may mention this already, but are you a classroom teacher and what grade level are, are you working with these? Are you incorporating this into your daily instruction with all your students? I am not a classroom teacher. I'm a technology integrationist with the Harrisburg School District. And my primary position is working with teachers and bringing these tools into their classrooms and working with them side by side with this. So are we putting this into daily use? No, not at this moment. But students are getting familiar with these tools in our makerspace, which will lend itself to when a teacher gives our students a project or they need to showcase their learning, some students will gravitate towards making robots to do that. And so uh, we usually introduce a new thing in the makerspace and let our students kind of tinker with it before we um, start to bring it into the classrooms. Any other questions? All right, seeing none pop up there. I want to show you one more thing before we take off. I only wanted this to be a half hour, be very quick, show you two robots, but then also um, answer any questions you may have. I'm going to show you my screen. This is the Hummingbird Robotic Kit site. Tutorials are phenomenal. I, like I said, I've taught myself. Um, building your first robot is where you start. So as you see here, you're going to see a similar design. I basically took and followed this to a T so that I could learn this material right along with our students. So very easy, tri-colored lights and a servio. Three pieces of equipment for this robot to make it happen. But their site is so, I mean, it's, it's really good. It's got curriculum needs. It's got project sketches or classroom projects of what teachers have done in the past. So the genetic si uh, simulation here, that's what I did. I, I followed that, I worked with that, I tried to problem solve and, and create my code, measuring motor speed. There was one that I was working on that I didn't get done is this one here, um, making acute and obtuse angles. And so, oh, this one's measuring hypotenuse, but there's one in the project SketchUp of creating angles. So I thought third through fourth, fifth grade, um, what a great way to have students review making acute and obtuse angles and basically the robot tells the students, shows the students with a popsicle stick where to draw their lines and then the student has to say is that obtuse or acute based on what they drew. So again, a lot of project ideas on here but a lot of ways to build right into our curriculum. I think that's the power of this is building this into our curriculum. Don't make it be something extra, make it be something that we do with students every day. The software is, is awesome as well because this Create Lab is what I would recommend for everybody right away. Start off here. Very easy, very simple to learn, uh, but, but very, very basic level. Once you get that understanding, then I would move up to Scratch. And this is great for, for elementary level, um, but also probably more higher, higher level elementary until they really get an understanding of programming and how things work. There's other programs down here. So there's the Arduino part, so you can use that in creating codes. But this is just very basic um, hummingbird, and I just wanted to introduce the concept to you and see um, 
how I could help or assist with, with this process. Um, how many kids do you have working together usually? You know, usually, like right now, I think we've got two groups of four, um, a group of girls, four girls, and a group of boys. Um, usually they start competing against each other a little bit. So that we have two groups right now of four working on building a robot and um, creating some sensors and some drop down things. One group's trying to build a gate that opens and closes with our servios based on a sensor using, a dis using the distance sensors. Um, how did you get funding for these kits? My students are bummed they're, they're so much. Are there smaller kits for kids to have at home? Um, I believe on their website, they have, they have smaller kits um, for home. Uh, let me see here. What is, let's go from low to high. They have a very basic kit. Um, it's just a Hummingbird Duo controller kit. It will basically do one thing, um, and that's just the kit itself. I don't believe it gives you power supply, snap-in, standoffs, and terminal tool. The dual kit does not come with its own set of Hummingbird dual kit parts like LEDs, motors. So just the kit, just the brain is $89. But if you want the LEDs in that, it's $160. Um, so that's something to think about too. The Hummingbird Duo Premium Kit gives you, um, again, that's right around $269. And then the big kit is $850. Um, we, we've done some really creative things working with our parent group, um, really using social media donors choose to really help us drive our projects and, and getting these tools for our students. Absolutely. I, I love the project sketches and I think they're, they're a great starting point, but they also challenge me as well to try to problem solve on my own. So thanks for making those, um, Bambi. Uh, we, we definitely enjoy those. Let's see here. My my kids are excited that you are the lady that makes them. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Jennifer, I am excited that your class is tuning in. Um, big shout out to your students. Uh, uh, kids, you guys are so lucky to have um, Miss Bond as your teacher. She has told me so many incredible stories about your classroom, of you being creative and innovative. Keep that up. Uh, that's what makes school fun. That's what are going to open up doors for you for jobs and just different pathways for you going on to middle school and even on to high school. Um, so keep keep on being creative and innovative. Um, really excited to continue to hear your stories. How do you deal with with the building and take taking apart while kids are working on it? With these kits, I've been a little more careful with. Once a student checks out a kit, that's their kit until their robot is built. And so we try to get everything built within a week for them so that we can keep new students going. But yeah, absolutely. That is hard for us in our makerspace um, because not all the kids come every day at the same time. So um, yes, these robot kits, I check out to students and they're kind of in charge of them. And we need to honor their, their time to create their robot. Can you talk a little bit about logistics of how you schedule students' classes for your makerspace? We do a before and after school makerspace. So before school at 7.30, we're open and we stay open until 3.30. And then we have directed studies, which is a study hall. And so, Judy, we, we allow our students to come down anytime during those, those three times. And then it started to be just part of our culture where our teachers will give out projects and our students will be like, oh, I could use the makerspace tools. I could try this. And so our students have started to come in even during class times to use our tools and use our space to create and tinker and showcase their learning. Uh, I, I am excited to see your pictures. Hopefully you guys will tweet those out to us. Um, I'm excited to see the sewing that's happening in your classroom and the creative things that you guys are thinking of during your unit there. So keep plugging away. Um, nice job. So that is the basics of Hummingbird kits. Um, they, they are a little spendy at $850, but they, if you can get a parent group or you can get a donor's choose item, I highly, highly recommend this tool because it just lends itself for so many creation things. It's not just one robot. You can make stories with this robot. You can do poems with this robot. You can do math with this robot, social studies. I mean, there are just so many things that you could be creative with to create a robot that you wouldn't think of normally. When you think of robots, we sometimes think of moving, walking, talking. 
but it doesn't have to be that. This robot can be programmed to sense things, to collect data like a scientist, and then you take that data and you use graphs to create those things. So um, again, thanks so much for everybody popping in. If you need something, again, you can follow me on Twitter at Travis Slape. Um, Hummingbird Kits, uh, tweet them out. They are a great company that are just really excited to be working with educators. Bambi, thanks for joining us and, and sharing that you, you are one that create those sketches um, because I, I think they're powerful. They, they just give us a new idea on how to bring creativity and innovation into the classroom. We're also looking at a loaner program for robot petting zoos. If people want to contact me about that, that would be incredible. So. Awesome. There's, there's eight of you on here. Bambi's a resource. Connect with her. Um, use social media. Use Twitter. Tweet, tweet Hummingbird. Talk about their product. Um, and I know they'll help you. They'll, they'll, work, they'll work with you. They'll try to, to help um, however they can. Uh, they have a great place on their site for grants and how you could get these things. So um, Bambi, if you could just put your email or something in the questions there, I'll leave it up for people to get. So if there is no longer any questions, I've taken enough of your time. It's 2.07. Um, I would gladly do another one if people had questions or you wanted to show administrators. This video will be archived on YouTube, so I'll tweet that out as well. Feel free to get that. But uh, again, thanks so much. Uh, we're, we're excited about our kits. We're excited to have our students make robots and see where they go from there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great, uh, great rest of your day. And if you're going on break, enjoy your break. And we'll be back in January um, creating and making in our makerspace at Harrisburg South Middle School. Thanks.